Hi, my name is Lexi Jong and welcome to my channel. Today I am super excited to share with you my Divine Rose 2 palette. So it finally arrived. I have the pink package. It is gorgeous. And inside we do have the beveled mirror. I have a little clip here that'll show you guys um, unboxing the packaging and some swatches. Okay, so before we get into the first eye look, I wanted to share with you guys the packaging and the palette with some swatches. So first of all, this is the packaging that it comes in. You can see it's absolutely gorgeous. My corner is a little busted, not a big deal to me. I'm just glad that it finally arrived. I had a little mishap with the shipping and it was delivered to the wrong address originally. So very glad to have gotten this. Um, like all of her other Mothership palettes, it is. It has the ingredients on the back and you can see that mine is all bumpy and everything. This is not from Pat McGrath. It came in nice condition aside from this corner being busted, but my husband was a little overzealous with the sanitizing spray and it started to actually disintegrate parts of the cardboard. So um, it's still a little wet and damp and unfortunately got all bumpy now. So uh, like all of her other Mothership palettes, we have 10 shadows. They are 1.32 grams each. And I purchased the pink packaging, which is incredibly shiny. You know, the black one, I get fingerprints all over it too. This one, same deal. All right, so inside we have a mirror and it is the typical beveled mirror that we have with the Pat McGrath Mothership palette. And here are the shades. And my daughters have seen me looking at this online and they were so excited this came. They seriously did like that jumping up and down happy dance. You would have thought that I was telling them we were going to Disney World or something. It was so funny. I wish I had gotten that on camera. But anyway, um, let's go ahead. We'll swatch these. And I'm going to swatch the um, top row and then the bottom row. So I'll be including the spe special shades in that top row swatching. Okay, so here are the first three. We have Skin Show Rose Opal. And you can see that it's like a peachy champagne type of shade. Uh, it has a little bit of a peachy tint to it. Then we have Naked Blush, which is kind of an orangey rose shade and like a little terracotta kind of mixed into it, but more of the orange terracotta, less of the brown. And then next up we have Eleganza. And the special shades in the top row, we have Bronze Rosé 005, and then Gold Lust 001. And the Bronze Rosé is a really, really beautiful shade. It actually has a little bit of Clementine Orange type shade in there. Uh, so it's a little bit of a light orange kind of mixed into the bronze. I think it's really pretty. And then the Gold Lust 001. This is going to be a warmer gold tone. Next up, these are the first three on the bottom row. And we have Extreme Burgundy, Divine Dusk, and Rose Seduction. So Extreme Burgundy is, you know, kind of like a berryish burgundy. I think it's a very pretty shade. And in my viewfinder, it's looking a little bit more brown, but in person, it really looks like a berry burgundy shade. So hope that's coming across. And then here we have Divine Dusk, which you know, it's kind of like brown with a bit of rose in there. And you can see when I shift, you can see the pink sparkle in there. And then we have Rose Seduction, which is technically not an eye shape. Uh, sorry, it's technically not an eye safe uh, shade, but I do plan on using it on the eyes. And it is a beautiful, bright, rosy pink. And you can see there's like a metallic sheen to it. And the two special shades on the bottom row, we have VR Sextra Terrestrial. And you can see that beautiful shift. So it actually, you know, everything I've seen online, the green looks really kind of light, but on my skin, it really goes into a bright, um, not as deep as an emerald, kind of like a bright Kelly green. 
and it shifts to this beautiful pink shade that goes really well with the rose seduction. And then the last shade here is Astral Pink Moon, which, you know, is kind of like more of a, it's a champagne glittery topper shade with a touch of rose to it. So very, very beautiful. I am excited to play with these. Okay, so on to some notes about the actual palette. So you can see you do get quite a bit of kick up in the pan. Um, I actually did not experience too much fallout from the shadows themselves. The Extreme Burgundy was a little bit dustier than the others, so I did get some fallout from that. And then I also got some from the Astral Pink Moon here, which is really kind of a sparkly topper type shade. So, you know, it's pretty diffuse and I would get a bunch of sparkles on my cheeks from that. So those are the only two shades I really experienced any fallout from. Um, again, if you don't tap your brush hard, you're gonna get fallout from any of the shades, but it wasn't significant, so it was actually pretty good. And I love this palette. So um, I am one of the few who I really liked the Divine Rose palette, but I didn't like it enough to call it love. <laughs> so, um, you know, I think this palette's better. So this, it, it's gorgeous. So I was trying to think about which ones my favorite shades are, but honestly, they all work so well together. There isn't any shade in here that I would trade out. Um, the one that I would trade out the most is probably this Naked Blush, just because, you know, I don't know, maybe something a touch cooler would be nice, but, um, you know, it, it works. They all work. They all work beautifully together. So I really love all of them. My absolute favorite shade, of course, is the VR Sextra Terrestrial. The color shift on that is amazing. The shade of green that you get with that, it's gorgeous. I don't think it picks up on any camera. I have not seen any pictures or videos uh, or anything, you know, with that true vibrant green shade actually pulling through. What I see in person is so much so much prettier. It's like a bright, vibrant Kelly green. That's probably the best way I can describe it. It is gorgeous. Um, so definitely not as deep as emerald, but if you picture like a bright emerald, like a, like an actual emerald gemstone, uh, one of the lighter ones with the sun shining through it, that's kind of the shade of green that you get. And of course you have that beautiful ship. So in the pan, you know, mostly you see the pink, but you can kind of see See, even there you see like a bit of the ship, but it actually looks more like a bronzy greenish, but no, not in person. In person, it's like this bright, beautiful green. And that is definitely one of my favorites. Well, it is my favorite. And then next, you can't go wrong with the Rose Seduction. Um, this shade, you know, it looks, it does not look as metallic-y in the pan as it does in the eye. You get this beautiful sheen to it. And it's not like metallic-y where you're seeing like chunks of anything or it looks kind of thick. It's just this really awesome sheen that it has. And I just, I think it's gorgeous. I think that's kind of what sets this apart from just getting like a hot pink shadow somewhere. And then, you know, so those would be my top two then would be Eleganza. Um, Eleganza is gorgeous. Again, it has a beautiful sheen to it as well. This one, you know, you can see a little bit more depth and dimension to it. Let me just show you these three again as swatches because they are gorgeous. So here is VR Sextra Terrestrial. And again, you can't really see the shift. Here is Rose Seduction and here is Eleganza. And just look at those. So I just, I think they are absolutely incredible. And the texture, I don't see, still can't really see that green. Like I can see the green from here, but I don't see it pick up in the camera. It's just gorgeous. And actually when I'm holding it just like this and looking at the green, I see the bright Kelly green here. And then I actually see a little gold um, kind of at the tail. So light green mixed with the gold but it's just beautiful, beautiful. So I'm not sure, can you see, you see that sheen on the Rose Seduction? I love it. And then of course, 
here's eleganza so you can see kind of when i rub it out a little bit there's a little bit of um kind of like a light bronzy-ish base to it and then it's just this beautiful metallic rose shade it's it's gorgeous so those would be my top three favorites but you know i honestly love all of the shades in here i didn't think i would like extreme burgundy that much but mm, love it <laughs> um the bronze one it's it's fantastic it's one of the better bronzes in my opinion and um, yeah i just love them i love this uh astral pink moon for like inner corner highlight it's my favorite for the inner corner highlight out of these shades but i also really like using the gold there i just i love all of them again they are kind of dusty in the pan and i have a fabric chair and unfortunately i did get some of this on there so i'll have to try and clean that off but it is a little bit messy in the pan just tap your brush off performance wise uh, i do have a uh you know a five hour in clip of the shadows as i wore them that was with the primer in general these are wearing the same as other pat mcgrath shadows i have the quality is definitely there um, fantastic quality. I didn't have an issue with any of these shades. Um, they all blend it beautifully. And honestly, you know, wearing something like this, you just, you can't go wrong. I mean, you can do something really simple. You know, these shades all look beautiful on their own as well. You can blend and mix them. I really like this. So currently my favorite Pat McGrath palettes are Subliminal followed by Midnight Sun and i have to add this in there i don't know where it kind of goes in that mix but it's definitely in my top three so uh that basically sums it up i really love this palette more than i expected to and i am just i'm so glad i have it uh so i just yeah th there are no words it is a beautiful beautiful palette all right so um comparison to divine rose i think the divine rose palette is a lot more muted than this palette it's also a beautiful palette but for me it just didn't really have as much of a wow factor and yet as neutrals they just didn't work as well for me they're just not my preferred colors so you know it was it's a nice palette and i like it and i use it but it's not one of my favorites and I just find this one to be so much more, it has more depth. And I think the colors all just, they go so well together. And yet there are different shades in here that you don't get in Divine Rose. It's not just like a deeper version of Divine Rose. I just think that the color story in this particular palette is a little bit more exciting. And yet, although they are primarily metallic shades, you know, there are colors that are subdued enough that you can do a more natural look um, or, you know, kind of go crazy. So uh, I really like that about this palette. Now, the only matte shades are the Extreme Burgundy and the Naked Blush. And then everything else has some sort of sheen or shimmer to it. The sparkliest one is going to be the Astral Pink Moon. And again, this one does have a bunch of glitter fallout works beautifully as a topper as well. It just kind of looks like starlight, you know, like if you're like out in the country and you look up at the stars on a beautiful night, you know, that's like the density of the sparkles. And I just think it gives a beautiful touch. It's everything here is just so well thought out. So this is kind of what I was hoping that divine rose was going to be so this is all that and more in my opinion all right so i do have a bunch of eye looks for you guys to um take a look at if you are interested there are time stamps below so feel free to use those to skip around and then at the end i will have comparisons with the divine rose one palette as well so thank you so much Okay, so I'm going to start off with the Esam S33 brush, and I'm going to go into this first shade, Skin Show Rose Opal, and I'm going to kind of apply this all over. Now, I do have the ABH primer on, and I'm putting this all over the crease. Sorry, I misspoke. I didn't mean all over the eye. 
just all over to the crease up to the brow. And you can see when I apply that, hopefully that's picking up, but there is definitely a bit of a rosy look to that. It's very pretty. So this is the one that has a bit of a peachy tint to it, but on the eye, it's actually like a, it looks a little bit rosier than it did in the swatch. Let's add just a little bit more. And there we go. I'm seeing more peach now, but it's like a peachy pink mixed with champagne. Very, very pretty. Wiping off the brush, I am going to go into the shade next to it, Naked Blush, and I'm just gonna get the tiniest bit on the tip. It's actually more than I wanted. I'm gonna knock a little bit of that off, and I'm gonna go into the crease here as well. This time, I am keeping it more directly in the crease, but since this is a fluffy brush, it is going a little bit above and a little bit below. Just kind of buff the corner here. Okay, I'm wiping off the brush. I'm gonna set that aside. And I think next I'm gonna go into Eleganza, which is right next to that. And this is the Refer 02 brush, so it's a flat shader. And I'm going to leave the inner corner open, but I'm going to lay this down on the basically middle two thirds or so of the eye. So I'm leaving the inner and the outer corner alone. Just heading up to the crease, not going above it. Wiping off that brush, I'm going to go into the bronze rosé right next to that. And this is going on the inner corner or the, not the inner corner, but the inner portion. Just kind of tapping where they meet. And for the outer portion, again, wiping off this brush, I'm gonna go into Divine Dusk, and I'm just gonna add a tiny bit to the outer edge. Okay, and moving in with the Refer 03, I'm going to twirl this into Rose Seduction here. And you know what, actually, I'm going to get this dampened. So I have one of these Evian spray bottles here. I'm just gonna spray this Go in there again. And I'm just going to create a line here with the Rose Seduction. And I'm twirling my brush as I use it to make sure I'm still getting a lot of pigment. And I'm just gonna go up a little, not a real wing, but a little bit. And just kind of straightening that out. So I'm taking the Builder One brush from Sonia G and I'm just gonna kinda move some of this shadow, make it a little wispier. All right, and now for the VR Sextra Terrestrial, I'm going to use my finger for this and apply it kind of in this center portion here. Actually, the whole second half of the eye. Just taking this Refer 03, no additional shadow, but just going over this line where I tapped over it a little. 
All right, and then for lining the lower lashes, I'm going into Divine Dusk with the um, Builder One from Sonia G. And wiping that brush off, I'm going to get a little bit of the VR Sexual Terrestrial and put that right here as well, right underneath Divine Dusk. Okay, I'm wiping this off one more time. We're going into Gold Lust 001. And I'm using the side of the brush this time. And I'm going to put a little dab here in the inner corner. Just gonna drag some of that down below. Going back to the Esam S33 that I used in the beginning. And again, I have wiped this off. I'm just gonna blend the crease area. Taking the Builder One, again, I wipe that off, and I'm just gonna get a little sparkle from the Astral Pink Moon and put this under the brow arch. All right, so I guess <laughs> this is it for the first look. We'll be doing a few more, and I am going to add some mascara and stuff, and then I will give you a full distance shot. Okay, so I am not in love with this eye look. It's not the shadow's fault. I just, I think this wing is uh, not really to my liking. So I'm going to go in with the Surratt. And I figured at this point, we might as well just go with it. So I'm using the Inglot Duraline. And I think this is the Surratt Petite Concealer Brush. It doesn't seem to be labeled, but I'm pretty sure that's what this one is. It's either that or the... Um, the T eyeshadow brush, but I think this one is a little bit smaller. So I'm going to go ahead and go back into the Rose Seduction, and I'm using the tip of this brush. And again, I dipped the brush into the Inglot Dar line, and we're going to go ahead and go over the line again. Okay, I like that better. I like it just being a little bit more pronounced. Let's just add a little more. Okay, so that is it for um, up close. They kind of look like pink devil horns, but I think it's interesting. And let me just shift so you guys can see some of the duochrome. Hopefully the camera picks it up. But I know from things that I've seen online, the actual color change, the shift has not picked up well on camera. It's really a beautiful, beautiful green shade um, that it shifts to. And I just, I don't think the camera does it justice. Okay, so here is the finished first look from a distance. And you can see when you use this rose seduction shade wet or you know with the inglot duraline like i did it really makes it a lot more metallic-y and a bit you know brighter pink more hot pink i really like it i think it's really interesting again that shade i believe is not eye safe technically so just you know a caveat there but I think this is more colors than what I would usually put on at one time, but I actually really like the way it turned out. It's different, it's interesting, and I like my pink devil horns. So I kept the rest of the makeup very minimal today um, to kind of give the eyes the emphasis. And I'll be back with more looks, thanks. Okay, so it has been about five hours. I just wanted to show you how well the eyeshadow has held up. I've been outside for the last hour and a half and it's pretty hot out today. So just wanted to show you there's no creasing or any issues at all. Everything's still very vibrant. Okay, so I was basically done with another eye look and then realized I wasn't recording. So I took it off. I was just doing this eye. So you might see a little residue left, but I'm going to do the exact same thing. So there's no primer or anything on here. 
Okay, so I'm gonna start off with the Sonia G Classic Crease. I'm going to go into Naked Blush. Now, moving on with the Sonia G Soft Shader, I'm going into Bronze Rosé 005. And this is going on the inner third. And to add the excess in the inner corner there. Wiping off the brush, I'm going to go into Eleganza. Just kind of tapping over the edges there. And I'm covering the majority of the mobile lid that is remaining. I'm leaving the very, very edge out. Next, using the tip of this brush, I'm going to go into Extreme Burgundy. And I'm going to add this to the outer corner. And then the excess that's left on the brush is going here in the crease. Going back with the fluffy crease brush, no additional shadow, just blending these edges. Then I'm taking the Sonia G Flat Definer and I'm going into Extreme Burgundy and I'm going to line the top lashes with this. Taking the residue just in this outer corner here for the lower lash line. Then I'm wiping off the brush and I'm going to go into Divine Dusk. And I'm going to line the rest of the lower lashes with this. All right, so that is one eye look. Then I'm gonna go in and actually take the Astral Pink, Pink Moon, and I'm using my finger here, and just gonna kinda add some of this sparkle on top here, just all over the lid. Taking the crease brush and just kinda Making sure that's all cleaned up. Wow, that makes it really glitzy. The sparkle on this is kind of, you know, it's really fine and it kind of, you know, it's not super densely packed. So it kind of gives you this like starlight effect. It's really cool. All right, now as for fallout, not too much fallout with the shades. I did have a little bit with the deeper shades, but if you really tap your brush hard, you're not really gonna get a ton. But this sparkle shade, I got plenty of sparkle down here, as you can see. Um, but other than that, I just have a little bit of the Extreme Burgundy and not too much of anything else. All right, so that's one look. Okay, for the other eye, we're gonna go into the Skin Show Rose Opal with the Classic Crease from Sonia G. And you can see the peachy tint when I put that on. Let's add a little bit more. I'm gonna take this up right under the brow. It's kind of all over. Then I'm taking the Sonia G Mini Booster and I'm gonna go into Goldlust 001 and I'm going to add this to the crease, but I'm going to keep it pretty much just in the crease. Let's 
add a touch more. And just putting the excess in the corner here that didn't really take to add a little bit more of this right to the inner corner. And wiping off that brush, I'm then gonna go into the um, Astral Pink Moon and add a little bit of that right on top in the corner. Make that a little bit sparklier. And if you see, there's a little bit more whiteness to that. Next, I'm going in with the Sonia G Builder 3. And this is just a flat shader style. And I'm gonna go into VR Sextra Terrestrial. And I am going to apply this all over the lid here. Okay, that color is just so gorgeous. You know, honestly, you get such a great color shift. I really don't think you need anything else with it, um, but I am going to just bring out the corners a little bit with the liner. So I'm taking the Sonia G Flat Definer, going into Extreme Burgundy, and I'm going to just kind of line the corners here a little bit. So I'm bringing out a corner a little bit. And I'm keeping this soft. And I'm gonna take this and line the lash line with this. All right, so this is a little deep for me to use all underneath my lower lashes. I just don't like how deep that looks. So I am going to then actually switch over to the Bronze Rosé 005 using the same brush. And I'm just going to continue. I have the Extreme Burgundy up to about here. So I'm just going to line the remainder of the eye. Now I'm just taking the brush and kind of blending all of the colors here together. All right, wiping off the brush, I'm just going to fan this out a little bit so it gets a little bit smokier or a little, a little bit more diffuse. It kind of looked better before I messed it up. Let's see here. I'm gonna add just a little bit more and just kind of fix that again. All right, well, that looked better before I messed this part up. But there you go. So there are two looks. I think, you know, this VR Sextra Terrestrial it is just incredible. All right, I'm going to take these off. I'll be back. I'll do two more. Okay, so I am back and I do still have some sparkle on my cheek, but no big deal. We're gonna go in to the Skid Show Rose Opal and I'm using the Sonia G Worker Pro. So 
So just sticking this in the crease, building it up a little bit. Okay, and I went just a touch under the brow bone. Okay, so next, moving on, we are going to go into the Gold Lust 001. Same brush, I just wiped it off. And we're doing the inner portion. Just get a little bit more there. All right, and we're doing a super easy one. So next we're moving into Rose Seduction. Same brush, again, I wiped it off. And definitely tapping this off, look how pretty that is. And just gonna apply this right up against the gold. You can see the metallic sheen of Rose Seduction. When you look at it in the pan, it doesn't look so metallic. And then you put it on the eyes and it's gorgeous. All right, so I'm just gonna take what's left on the brush and tap over the gold here. So it's a little bit more of a transition there. Okay, moving on, we've got the Sonia G Flat to Fine Art going into Sextra Terrestrial and I'm using the flat side of this. And I'm just gonna put a touch here at the outer corner. And I don't know if it's looking this way to you guys, but it looks green here. So gold, a little orange where it overlaps, the beautiful rose seduction, and then a touch of green here. And I'm just lightly tapping right here, um, kind of at the boundary with what's left. All right, so now I'm gonna go into the sexual terrestrial with the tip of this. And I'm going to line this outer portion here. And I'm actually, I'm gonna line about two thirds with this extraterrestrial actually. Then I'm wiping this off and I'm going to go into the rose seduction with the tip. And I'm putting it slightly overlapping this extraterrestrial but not as close to the lashes because the pink up close to my eyes, you know, I just, just I don't like that look on me. <laughs> All right, wiping the tip off, going back into the gold and just kind of bringing that to meet the others. Okay, I really like, like the way this looks. I think it needs some black liner. So I'll put that on, I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm back and this is the final eye. I added the Surat Autographique um, liquid eyeliner in black to the upper lash line. And then I used the Linda Hallberg black core crayon to kind of do the waterline and a little bit of tight lining on the upper lash line. My eyes are super sensitive to any sort of touch there. So they start watering. Um, so you can see they're a little wet. Uh, and then I used the Fenty full frontal mascara and that is this look. So you can see the shift, I hope that's picking up in the camera of the um, sexual terrestrial at the end and it's just that metallic sheen to the gold and the rose. I, I really like this. This one might be my favorite look so far. All right, so on to the other eye. Okay, now we're gonna go into more of the mauve rosy shades. So I'm gonna start off with the Refer 01 brush and I'm going into the Skin Show Rose Opal, putting that in my crease and again, blending that up. So just a really light dusting of this. Just making sure I cover the whole crease. Okay, wiping off the brush, going into Naked Blush next to it and just applying a little bit more of this to 
you know, it's going in the crease like the tip is, but I'm actually going on to the mobile lid at the upper portion here. Okay, and wiping off the brush, I'm then going into Extravaganza right here. And I'm going to cover the inner two thirds of the lid with this. Wiping off the brush and going into Divine Dusk. Doing this outer portion and overlapping extravaganza or eleganza. So you can see it's a bit deeper and a little bit more, a little bit browner. Just adding a touch more there. Then taking the Sonia G Flat Definer in Extreme Burgundy, and I am using the flat side of this to add a little bit right there to the outer corner. And then the tip, I am just going to drag up and over a little. The residue is going on the lower lash line. Wiping the brush off and just kind of dragging this a bit so it's not quite so messy. Again, I keep getting it bigger than I want it. So very light, soft wing with extreme burgundy there. And I think instead of lining my eyes with the burgundy this time, we are going to line it with the gold. So just dipping the flat definer in the gold here and let's see how this looks. You know what, actually we're going to get this wet. So I have a little mixing plate here next to me and I just added a drop of the Inglot Duraline and I'm going to dip the brush in there and then into the gold. And let's see how this goes. Not too dark, let me try it again. So I'm really actually swirling the brush in here this time because kind of running along it, I didn't really seem to pick too much up. So I see a little bit of gold sparkle going down, but it's definitely not as much of a gold line as I was expecting. So we're gonna go over it one more time. So that is better. I'm going to drag what's left on the brush kind of here over this burgundy. Just get a little of the gold residue on there. And wiping off the brush, I am going to go into Astral Pink Moon on the flat side and add that to the inner corner. That is a beautiful inner corner shade and brow highlights. So let's put that right under the arch here. There, so sparkly. All right, and there's nothing on my brush. I just wiped it and just running underneath one more time here. All right, I'm gonna add some mascara to that and I'll be right back. All right, so here is the final eye look here. And you could just get like a glint of that gold along the lash line. And again, sorry, my eyes are a little watery right now, um, but there we go. All right, so I will be back with one final look. 
Okay, so for the last look here, we're going to go into Skin Show Rose Opal, and I'm using the Ruffer 15 brush, and I am getting a bunch on the tip. And I do not have any primer or anything on. And I'm taking it all the way up to the eyebrow. Next, I'm taking the Sonuji Builder Pro and I am going to go into Eleganza. I'm going to take this here. So, just shy of halfway. Okay, then I'm going to go into the Bronze Rose 005. Same brush, just wiped it off. And I'm just patting a little bit right here in the center. I'm not going to do too much with this shade. And then I'm going to go into Divine Dusk. I couldn't decide if I wanted to do Divine Dusk or Rose Seduction, but I think I want to do Divine Dusk and see if I can create kind of something really, you know, sophisticated and not super bright. So, I mean, it's sophisticated, but it's not, it's not dull. You definitely have a lot of sparkle and everything still. So I love the way this color is playing as it does this, but I think I do still want to add a little bit of the rose seduction. So I'm going to take the Sonia G Smudger 2, going into rose seduction on the flat side, and I'm going to add just a touch here to the outer corner. Okay, and going back in with the Ruffer 15, no shadow, just blending these creases and kind of just dabbing on this rose seduction to kind of subdue it just a touch. I always end up putting eyeshadow on with my mouth open like a dead fish, but I just can't seem to remember to ever close it. So you have like a hint of the rose seduction here, but not full force. And I think it just gives a little something when I move my eyes. All right, so I actually really like this. Okay, moving on, I'm using the Ruffer 23 brush. I'm going into Astral Pink Moon. I'm twirling the brush in here, sorry go and I'm going to dab this in the inner corner and I'm taking the residue of that under the arch so it's just it's a tiny touch of it there spread that actually And then for under the eyes, I'm going to use Extravaganza. All right, to line the top of the eyes, I'm taking the Inglot Dur line and I'm going to add a drop of this to my plate next to me. And using the same brush, I'm getting the brush damp and then I'm going to go into the Bronze Rosé 005. All right, so I have plenty on here and I'm going to just make a line here at the top. It's just a little touch. All right, so you have a hint of that bronze there, but I'm not done. I'm going to wipe this brush off, dab it in the Dura line again, and I'm going into VR Sexta Terrestrial, and again, twirling the brush, and I'm going to just go over the bronze with this. I'm twirling this brush as I use it to make sure I'm getting all the pigment off of it that I twirled. I'm just going to do this little outer portion. 
cushion as well. I find it makes my eyes look a little bit more lifted. All right, so this is it for the eyeshadow and I really like it. So although you don't necessarily always see the line of the sexual terrestrial in certain lighting, you do, you see this like bright vivid green eyeliner and I'm not sure if the amp camera is picking it up because I honestly never saw any swatches look as green as it does in real life. It's beautiful. If they just had a solid shade that shade, it would be one of my favorites. All right, so I'm gonna finish up my eyes and my makeup and I'll be back, thanks. Okay, so let's go ahead and compare some swatches of Divine Rose 1 and Divine Rose 2. So I've swatched both palettes, top row and bottom row on my arm and over here on the left, we have Divine Rose 2 and over here on the right, we have Divine Rose 1. So just for recollection here, Going down from the top, you can kind of, it's hard to see this first swatch here. This is the Skin Show Rose Opal. So we're going to be starting here. I will name them going this way and then second row. All right. So starting at that top, that very light swatch is Skin Show Rose Opal, followed by Naked Blush, then Eleganza, Bronze Rose 005, Gold Lust 001, then that first matte shade there in the second row is Extreme Burgundy, Divine Dusk, Rose Seduction, VR Sextra Terrestrial, and Astral Pink Moon. Moving on to Divine Rose 1, it is a gorgeous palette and honestly I thought this would be one of my favorites when I picked it up, but I love Divine Rose 2 way more. Okay, so we are going to start off again the same way. First row, I'm going to read them off here, and second row. All right, so up here, this is our first shade here. This is Skin Show Nude. Okay, and then we're following that by Valoria. Then we have Sable Bronze. Refined Gold 002. And then that really light swatch in the middle there is Iridescent Pink 003. So it has a pink shift to it. Second row, we start off with Extreme Mahogany, Love Lace, Rose Dusk, VR Rose Venus, and Astral Solstice. All right, so those are Divine Rose 1 and Divine Rose 2. And, you know, when I was originally looking at Divine Rose 2, I kind of thought that Divine Dusk and, um, what is this one? This is Lovelace. I kind of thought that they were similar, but you can see here, these are right back to each other. They are, they are not. Um, Divine Dusk is much more brown than Lovelace is. And then over here, this is Eleganza. It's really not like any of these either. Okay, and just one more set of swatches. We're going over the Blitz Astral Quad in Ritualistic Rose. It's kind of like an accompaniment to Divine Rose. So I'm going to do the top two and then the bottom two. Okay, so I'm gonna put these right down here. All right, so these four here are Ritualistic Rows. And we're going, again, same pattern. Top row, which is starting with this gold, and that is Antique Gold 002, followed by Astral Rose Orchid. Then we have Rose Quartz 005. And then finally, we have Beyond Bronze 003. And it's not really similar to any of the shades in Divine Rose 1 or 2, but it is a nice addition to the Rose family. Okay, thank you so much for joining me as I experimented with the new Pat McGrath Divine Rose 2 palette. Just like her other big mothership palettes, this retails for $125. The pink shade that I got is limited edition. It's been popping on and off of the Pat McGrath site. I don't believe that this 
color packaging will be available at any other site. Otherwise, it is available at Sephora in the black case. And I'm not sure if it's currently available, but it was. It's again, going in and out of stock as well. Um, but it this palette is not meant to be a limited edition set of colors. So, you know, if it goes out, it will be back. And overall, I think this is a fantastic palette. I love the colors. I love the quality of these. Typically in the Mothership palettes, you know, they all have good quality. I don't typically have any issues with um, many of the shades. Sometimes there's one or two shades that I have trouble with, but none of these. They are all completely fantastic. So I love this palette. I love the looks that I've created with this. You know, even the ones that are a little bit more unique that I wouldn't wear all the time, like the pink double horns. But um, overall, I really, really enjoyed this. And I hope this review was helpful and the eye looks you found interesting. So if you like the video, please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I hope to see you guys in my next video. So thank you so much for joining me, and have a great day. Stay safe and healthy.